Hello. How is everybody? Hello, hello, hello. You guys say hello when you pop on. I'm gonna um hi Louise. I'm doing I'm doing okay today. Uh I, I uh broke a tooth on Monday night and had oral surgery yesterday, so doing okay today. I'm very sore. Tender. Anyways, um I'm talking funny because now I have a anyway. Moving on. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so today I hope you guys are doing great and I'm going to try and stop uh, touching the table because I know it shakes the camera because you guys are actually attached to my table. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Trava. Thank you, Sandy. I know. Uh, I, was a, I, w I had planned to do this yesterday and then that happened. You know, I was eating popcorn Monday night sitting watching tv and it broke anything anything besides dental work i know i know yep i didn't sleep couldn't eat you know i even try, i took a couple of sips of coffee yesterday morning i couldn't handle it so it was like okay this isn't gonna last and then i could actually wiggle half of it because it split it in half right down to the to the root i could wiggle it with my tongue so i was like we got to get this taken care of i can't eat with this oh yes spread the love thank you so much if you guys would please i would appreciate it <clears throat> so i had um a customer purchase this online now you guys <clears throat> this is what she purchased it's a hanging beehive um, I've been making these for three years. So, um, they're still pretty popular. So I just, I keep them in my shop. These are a great seller. And, um, you know, if anybody wants this size, they are available in my shop. These are, my thing is covered up. So these are a good eight and a half inches from here to here, but with the hanger, they're about 12 inches. So this customer purchased this online and then sent me a message um, <clears throat> asking, do I make them in smaller sizes? I never have because these were, these were such a good seller. I was like, never thought of it. Okay. So we're going to make a smaller size. Now, a lot of the beehives that I have seen are like the eggs that I'm going to put this away so I can do this. So a lot of the eggs that people use for these sitting beehives are the eggs that are, are um, come apart here in the middle this way. So these ones come apart differently, which is why they're perfect for the hanging beehive. They have the flat back um, piece to them. These are from Hobby Lobby. I got these last year and just never did anything with them. So when she asked me about it, I went into my stash and I'm like, well, I've got these. These will work. So this is what I use as the base of my beehives are these kind that are used this way. Now, this larger one, the base of it is the exact same thing, just in a larger version. And I get these ones from Dollar Tree. Okay. <clears throat> and so I'm going to attempt to make this exact thing just scale it back a little bit so that it fits this size okay 
So it's going to be smaller bees, less florals, and, you know, less time to make. So super cute. And I'm going to go ahead and turn you guys down and get going. If you guys would please um, share this video, I'd appreciate it. And let's get some more viewers on here. All right. Let's see if I can get you guys straight here. Sorry. Okay. So here we go. Uh, I used a big jute um, rope roll, and I get my jute rope from Joann's. <clears throat> Just FYI. I get these big rolls from Joann's. So this is what's left of one roll, and I'm going to use it up, and then we'll use the brand new roll that I have sitting here. So you want to make sure that your egg is good and snapped together. And I'm going to start, I like to start on the bottom and end at the top where the hanger is going to be, okay? Hi, Miss Peggy. So I come down here to the bottom. And I'm going to put, you need a lot of hot glue. I'm just going to put a dot of hot glue right there. And I'm going to take my end piece and just put it right there and hold it for just a second. Thank you so much for sprinkling, Treva. I appreciate it. All right. So once that's attached, um, you just start gluing and winding and gluing and winding. Now, what you want to do is keep it so it's tucked together and you can't see the hot glue from coming out. So, that's all I'm going to do is get that so it crosses over the tip of that one. And I'm going to hold that down. Once we get going, you don't have to hold it down so much. You just glue and go. Glue and wrap. So, you can see right here, we have our beginnings of the base. And you don't see any of the hot glue coming, squishing out from under there. So what have you guys been up to? I have not done a live on my page for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I have been cranking out new fake bake stuff for my live sales that I've been doing on Sundays for the past two Sundays. And I have one more Sunday to go. And then I will probably take a break from that because my grandkids are coming for a week. <clears throat> and there's no way I can do live sales with three kiddos running around. I want to spend time with them. So Have you guys made beehives before? And how many of you that make them do the sitting beehive that I was talking about? You had Mardi Gras all weekend and up three yesterday. Right? Yes, I know. I remember the kids would take off school for a week for Mardi Gras. When we first moved there, I was like, what? Seriously? And then. I experienced it, so yeah, I get it. I hope you had a great time. Well, it sounds like you did if you're recovering. <laughs> That's fun. That's exciting. Are your grandchildren on spring break? Yes, they will be on spring break. And so <clears throat> mom and dad, my daughter and her husband want to go, um, go away by themselves. So they figured they'd drop the grandkids off here at our house and then head out of town <laughs> the next day. I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I don't mind at all. So this is what it, we've got. We just keep wrapping it around on itself. 
So has anybody made a beehive? Any kind of beehive? You haven't, Treva. Well, these are so, so easy. It's hot glue, jute rope, and a plastic egg. <laughs> and you guys will get to see how I transition from the end of one jute rope roll to a new one. You haven't made one. I have some requests for beehive wreaths. Oh, okay. Well, Miss Louise, I have had um, people buy my larger ones and use them in a wreath as an embellishment. But these smaller ones, you could actually you know, put several of them in a wreath instead of just the one big one. This lady wants um, both the larger one and the smaller one. If she likes the smaller one, she said she'd take it too. So, <clears throat> all right, we're getting close to the end of this first one, but I will have some of these smaller ones available in my live sale on Sunday. Yeah, the big one does look great in a wreath. You and your husband are very talented. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, I had been um, trying to get him to pick up a hobby forever. And for the longest time, he, he was um, doing bicycle, backpacking, bicycling. I mean, he would go all over the place and do, it's called bike packing. It's, it's like hiking in somewhere, but riding your bicycle into the woods and spending the night in the woods. I was like, to me, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. And then when we moved into this house, okay, so I think no, that'll, that'll wrap around again. I want it to end back here in the back. So I will, this will work. This will be perfect. So that was his hobby, was the bike packing thing. He would go on these trips, weekend long trips, and do that. And then when we moved into this house a couple of years ago, that we have a huge yard and so it was really hard to do those weekend things and take care of the house and the yard and everything so he he needed to find a new hobby and just got a set of knives and some basswood from hobby lobby the knives came from amazon and he just started doing it so he's only been doing the whole <clears throat> carving thing for just over a year and a half. All right, so see how frayed it is down here? I'm gonna cut that off and hot glue that end. But what I wanna do is cut it at an angle this way.
And then I want to pinch these together as if the rope were still one piece. And put a little bit of glue on those ends to kind of hold them together. And give that just a few minutes or seconds. And then I'm going to lay it down. Now I can start this one. So you can see on this one, I've already done that and glued the end together. And I'm just going to take that and put it right on top of that one that I finished. where it's angled and then the two angled pieces will meet together and look like one solid piece. Right like that. And then it's really hard to tell unless you're looking for it. You really, it's really hard to tell where one ends and the other one starts. Jute rope and hot glue marry very, very well. And they hold, it holds really good. I hope this one turns out just as cute as the bigger one. I'm doing it the exact same way. I'm going to put the hanger on it the exact same way. It'll just be the mini version of the big one. <clears throat> so Louise, these would be really cute. I know a lot of people make the sitting ones because they like them to fit on a tiered tray. And this one will be small. It'll fit on a tiered tray, but it won't be able to sit on its own, but you could lean it up against something and it'd be just as cute. So what have you guys been up to in the past couple of weeks that since I haven't been on here? Hi, Neva. Someone um, asked me on one of my other videos that I had um, using a glue gun, why I drag the glue gun, glue gun at the end. And what they're talking about is when I squeeze it out like this and I come to the end, I go like that and wipe it off. <laughs> they're like, why do you do that? And I'm like, because it gets rid of the glue strings and you, then you don't have glue strings if you wipe the end off. They're like, oh, <laughs> I was like, okay. So in case y'all didn't know, here's your little tip. It, it it eliminates glue strings. Okay. The glue all over me instead of 
that. So I just unrolled some of this. Now I do save these and I'll show you why in just a minute. Here's a little bit of what I had left of my last one. So I'll show you how I use those in just a second. When I get this all wrapped up, I do use it. It does have a purpose instead of going to the garbage. And I am kind of timing myself on this to see how long it takes me to do. So I know I'm on a live and I know it would probably take me less time if I were not doing this live. But we're going to see how long it takes. I wanted to do this and be done by two o'clock. I don't know that that's going to happen because I'm <laughs> chatting away. What have you guys been up to? Tell me. Let's talk. It's been too, too, too long. I'll be doing my live sale again on Sunday at 430. That's my time to go this week. Um, 430 on the virtual Fake Bake Sale and More Marketplace. Facebook group, if anybody's interested. And last week I had some new goodies to show. This week I'll have some new goodies to show as well as some old ones. I'm really, really trying hard to come up with um, new stuff that I have not seen anyone else have. I had some um, hot glue squishing up in between, so I pulled it off with my fingernail. Now, some people will take their egg and like wrap it with uh, like painter's tape or something to keep it together before they start hot gluing. I don't. I mean, it, it does pop open, but you can just pinch it together. Sometimes those larger ones are a little tougher because it, I can't get my hand around them. But. How are we doing? You guys still with me? We're about halfway done wrapping. And some of that was me showing you the transition from one roll to another. And how I do that. What's everybody's plans for this coming up weekend? So you guys, yesterday I was at the oral surgeon getting the tooth pulled and today my grandson has to go in and get one of his pulled. Um, he's the 10 year old that's about to be 11 next month and his, one of his teeth got um, what is it called? I 
Not an infection. Abscess. Still here, never did see your love say, oh, really? Okay, so Neva, it's not here on my page. It's on a separate Facebook page. It's actually a group page called Virtual Fake Bake Sale and More Marketplace. And I have a link for that group on my business page in, in another post. You're leaving to go out of town because we... Oh, no, Neva. I'm so sorry. Mm, I'm so sorry to hear that. My iPad is acting up. I don't know why iPads and Facebook do not get along. So Neva, to see my live sale, you've got to go join that other group. Or at least go over there to watch. I have shown some of my wreaths and, and um, those have been in my say my live sale. Uh, painted projects, my husband's hand carved projects. Fake bags, centerpieces, you name it. It's all in the sale. The one thing about this is I have to keep pushing the rope up against the jute rope that's already there to make sure that it attaches really well or else it'll slide around on the plastic while the glue is still hot. And you don't want to have any gaps where you can see through. So as I wrap, I pull it so the rope is toward, you know, against each other. Hi, John. Treva, have you had good results from the sale? Yes, ma'am, I have. It's been great. It's It's been really good. So grateful for that group. I can't tell you. It has forced me to... Number one, get out of a comfort zone that I never thought I would be in, which is live selling. I like doing the live DIYs, things that I do here with you guys, um, because these are things that I've done my entire life. I've always done something like this. So to me, this is second nature. 
but actually being in front of people and selling items that I've made is nerve wracking. It's like, um, you know, especially the first one that I did, I was so all in my head with it. Like, will anybody like my stuff? Will they want to buy it? How's this going to go? I was so nervous, so nervous, you guys, that before I went live, I thought I was going to throw up. It was that bad. <laughs> It was so bad. <sighs> but yeah. <laughs> I was glad to have my husband help me because. It's good to have that support, even if they don't know what the heck they're doing. That would be you. <laughs> I know it was it was bad. Now this past Sunday, because I'd already done it once, it wasn't as bad. I was still nervous as I'll get out, but it wasn't as bad. I knew what to expect. I knew, you know, will it's all that that negative crap that goes through your head when you're doing something for the first time. And I just had to get over it and do it. And it's been the best thing so far. I've only done it twice. <laughs> Sunday will be the third. And then I'll probably take a Sunday or two off because the grandkids will be here. I don't know exactly what day they're coming and when they're leaving. So... I just got to play that by ear. But it'll give, you know, anybody else that wants to sell a time slot that'll be available. So if any of you guys make stuff and you want to do a live sale like that, they're taking applications. I'm just saying. All right, we're getting close to the end of the jute part of it. I was going to do this yesterday, but I just did not feel up to it. I was half my face was numb. <laughs> that was like I am not I am not doing a live <laughs> when I look like that. Some of you guys probably have some of these eggs floating around your house and you just need to grab a couple of supplies and you could make a ton of these. So I had said to myself, anything that doesn't sell on the live sales, I would put in my Etsy shop. Well, you guys, I've been so fetching busy trying to keep the orders up to date with the live sale. I haven't had time to put anything on Etsy. And it's selling so fast that if I were to put it on Etsy, I'd be afraid I wouldn't have anything from a live sale. So I was like, what do I do? But after this Sunday, where I'm going to have a couple of weeks off from the live sale, I will put what I have left in my Etsy shop. It's forced me to come up with some new stuff. I'll, I'll tell you that.
it is a good thing. It is. And to try and figure out how much stuff, or not stuff, how many items you need to do a live sale, I was like, you need a lot, but you really don't. I could do less items. I just have to slow down and talk slower. <laughs> I talk so fast and try to get through it. Because you get nervous like that. You get nervous and you just start talking and going faster. <laughs> and then I run out of stuff to sell. All right. We are coming to the top part now. So I do my handles a little bit different than some other people. I have watched a few people do their handles and I still prefer mine. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I figure after three years of making these, it's not a bad thing to teach other people how to do it. And it's not like it's a huge secret. I just never have taught someone else how to do this. I had a lady come by and um, pick up an order because she's local. And I usually, when that happens, try to meet people outside or whatever. Well, I didn't hear her pull up. So of course she'd be bops over out here in the building. And comes in and is trying to figure out, you know, how I make certain things, blah, 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 asking me questions. Well, there's just some things I make. I don't tell people how I make them. And it's like being at a craft fair and somebody saying, oh, that's awesome. How did you make that? Well, unless I'm doing it live, I'm not going to tell you. Because there's just some things that, you know, are proprietary to someone's business. And I just had to politely tell her, you know, I got to... <laughs> I got to get back to work. You need to leave type of thing. Okay. This is all we got left. Okay, I'm going to go around again. And see how that looks, if it's ready for a handle yet. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'm going to go right where the line crosses over. And I'm going to stop right here. And then I'm going to come to the front. And I want to see how tall I want that handle to be. 
So I'm going to go to right here. So I'm going to come over to this side to put my glue. So I have my handle here. This is where I want it to go. So I want to normally I would just keep going round and round and round with the glue. But I'm going to come over here to this side here and put it around the back side. I'm going to put it here. So there. Now this I'm going to hold just for a few seconds because I really need this to stay in place before I do the next part. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull this through the loop like that, pull it through the loop so that I can keep twisting it around the front. I'm just gonna hold that. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to continue to twist and wrap it and I'm going to push down really hard. I really want to squish that glue in and get it nice and secure. Okay, so I'm going to take this and cut. All right, so I want to take this end some hot glue on it. I don't want these pieces to come unraveled. This will help me start a new one the next time I have an order. And it won't look like a ratted mess like that. Okay. So now we have this. Now right back here where my hangers are, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little hole here on the back side of each hanger. To keep that secure so that it can hang with the weight that's going to be on it, I want to take a little bit of the jute and force it down in there. That's going to give it more glue to hold on to. And a little bit more stability for the beehive. I'm going to take some of this ratted, messy stuff that I didn't want. And this is what I do with it, is I use the ends of it to put in these holes by the hanger. So now that's nice and secure. There's the front. All right. Now, what I want to look for is to see if I didn't squish the jute rope together. So I'm looking to see if I have any places where I can see through to the egg underneath. And I'm not seeing any, but I would do it the same way. I would put glue in between and squish some of this down in there to hide it, okay?
Now you can go through and give your little, be have a haircut if you want to do that. Give it a little smooth look. Okay, so now the next thing that I do is I want to make the little hole for the beehive like this. So I'm going to hold it. Oh, that's a really good size right mm -hmm. there. I'm going to cut it right here at an angle again. And I'm going to get rid of this. Put that right there to dry. And then I'm going to take this one, put some glue there, and I'm going to put these ends together. And then I'm going to use my fingers and squish them. And one of those ends did not get any hot glue on it. So there's our little circle for the opening of our beehive. Now I know based on um, the larger one that we did, I want that to be on the one side of the beehive where my florals are going to be because it's going to hide that. I don't know if you guys can see. Right there is where I put it together. So I want this to be where it's going to be hidden once I put the florals on it. I see that. I can done with this. I can get that off my table. All right, so I'm gonna put a line of hot glue all the way around. And put it on there. And there's our little opening. So now, I just got done doing this other one and forgot to wash out my paintbrush. So I use a paintbrush and black paint to fill in my centerpiece where that opening is. Some people will use felt um, or markers. I just use paint. I'm more comfortable with the paint. And the jute uh, rope will destroy paintbrushes. So when you're doing this, make sure you're using a paintbrush you do not care about in case it tears it apart. Jute is very sturdy, very hardy, and you do not want to use a good paintbrush for this type of project. You got to kind of wiggle your brush around to get it in between the jute. And that's what we've got so far. I 
Okay. So the next part is the florals. Now I used on my big one, I had two sunflowers here and one sunflower up here. And then I had some white flowers sprinkled in it. I'm going to kind of scale that back and do one flower here and a one flower sunflower up here. And then y'all know. But the first thing I use is this here, which <laughs> y'all can see. This is all I have left. It used to be a garland. It says greenery garland in the floral department at Hobby Lobby. This is all I've got left because I, I use it a lot for these beehives. But this is one of the little strands of it that I'm going to use. And I go through and I just cut off some pieces here. Like I've already used that so I can get rid of this piece. Now, I have not done one of these small ones. So I'm gonna stick that right here. It gives it some greenery, a little bit of greenery in the back and then more coming down the front. I just have to be careful not to stick my hand in the black hole. <laughs> I do that so much because I don't let it dry. I try and crank as many of these out as I can in a hurry. And nothing's dry. Okay, let me put that one short. And then this one. I can go this way. So that one little branch, I had three pieces left and I've already put up my greenery on. So this is what we have. I put some right up here. It's going on both sides of the handle. And then I have some on either side because my sunflower is going to go right there. <clears throat> okay. Next, I want to use this greenery. Now, this comes from Hobby Lobby also in the floral department. Um, I also use these on my carrots. It's that same greenery from Hobby Lobby that I use. Oh, I don't know that you guys have seen my carrots. Um, I don't have one right here by me. Anyway, if you've been on my live sale, you've seen the carrots. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of this off. Now these Longer, wispy ones are probably going to be too long. I'm going to cut that off. So I cut off that really long one. So this is what I have left. And I can take this and put it... I'm going to cut this big, thick piece off at the bottom. And I'm going to stick it right there. Okay. 
Then I can take this piece and cut it shorter. And I'm going to stick it going down opposite where I just put the one above it. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to put some over here. This is left over from one of my other pieces. I'm going to cut this. It's too long. Okay, so this is what we have so far. You can see it gives a little dimension. Things are coming off of it. Nothing needs to be flat on it because worlds don't grow flat in the wild. Okay, I want a couple more. I want a small one. Let's do these right here. Okay. I want that one right there. And then this one, coming off down here. All right, it's looking cute, looking cute, cute, cute. All right, so I think those are good. I'm gonna put that back on the garland. Now let's grab some sunflowers. Now I get the big packs of these from Amazon because I use so many of them that they're actually cheaper to get on Amazon than at Hobby Lobby. And all I use are the sunflower heads of the flower. I, so I don't need an entire bush from Hobby Lobby for this project. So this is where this one's going to go. I am going to cut off that stem on the back side of it so that it sits a, a little bit more flush to the project. How are we doing? You guys still hanging in there? So this is that right there. And then I'm going to put another one on the top. This one I already cut off the back. Oh, that one doesn't have a center. I know there's a couple of them in here that... Yeah, there's a hundred in the bag, but I got gypped. Like this one, 
doesn't have a center. This one only had the back pedal. This one looks good. Still hanging, so freaking adorable. Yes, I am. It's so cute. Thank you, guys. All right, we're almost done. I just need to add the bees and the white flowers, and it will be done. So this one I put right up next to the hanger. And what that does for me is helps hold the hanger straight up and down. And it gives that flower something to lean against. So that's what that looks like right there. All right. Done with those. Now these I get at Hobby Lobby and I do buy them in a bush. So, but I just cut the stems off of where the white flowers are like that. And then I start cutting the flowers off because I want them, especially on this, as small as it is, to be individual flowers. So I'm just going to start popping them in. I'm going to put one down here under that sunflower. This white helps hide any um, gigantic glue, hot glue globs you might, you might have going on. It hides those. See? Cute. Thanks, Trayva. Now this one, I'm gonna cut a little shorter. Get this one right up there, like that. Now I'm gonna put another one on the back on the opposite side of this white one I just added because I don't want like the mechanics of where everything is back here. It's going to, I don't know, there's a big old giant glue glob right there. So one more flower will hide that. Blue strings. Okay, I think that's good. Use another one right there. Found another spot. I needed a white flower. I gotta hide some glue. Oh, I lost it. Where did it go? Right there. So that's what we have so far. Now we get to put our bees on. Okay, so I forgot to pull more bees out. I get these bees off of Amazon also, and there's multiple sizes in the package. For these smaller ones, I'm going to use the smaller size bees. They do have larger sizes like that, and then they have some medium ones. So there's three different sizes, and I want the smaller ones. 
and I want two. Okay, so for this part, I don't know if you guys can see, the bees have little faces on them. Okay, I um, will take a Sharpie and like on this one, I color in the little heads. So I take the Sharpie and I just color it. And turn the heads black. There's one. I've seen some really weird looking, cartoony looking bees. And I like mine to look a little bit more realistic, not with any smiles on their faces or looking like a cartoon. So I just color in the little heads and it kind of gets rid of any of that. Okay. So I'm just going to put some hot glue. I put one little bee right here like he is going into the hive. And then this other little guy. He's coming up here to smell the flowers. And that's it. You guys, how stinking cute is that? Okay, I'm going to turn you guys up. Hello, hello. 2.30, I did not make it. So, of course, I think I started a little late. Oh, here it is. And here's the, the big version. <laughs> so the big version and the little version. Thanks, Joan. I thought I turned out cute. I had never thought of doing a smaller one. I just been doing these for three years, but dang, these are cute. And now I have an option. I think it's adorable. Really cute. Thank you, Peggy. So how many of you guys are going to try it? Because these are adorable. I don't know why I never thought of doing a smaller, smaller one. Honestly, I haven't. So many people like the larger one, but this is cute. Look at it. It'll hang all on its own. You're going to try it, Joan? Awesome. So cute. So really, it's the egg, the jute, um, florals, which you can get them all at Hobby Lobby, and your bees from Amazon. Adorable. Stinking adorable. All right. Well, I guess I will take a picture of this and send it to the customer and see if she wants it. And I'm going to make some more because I'm going to sell them on Sunday during my live sale. So I hope you guys will join me there on Sunday for my live sale and, you know, grab some goodies. And like I said, you have to be in that other group to watch the sale. So jump over there, find the post that I put in my page and go join that group and then i'll see you guys on sunday all right thanks for hanging out with me you guys i'll see you hopefully next week bye